Right, you crazy bunch of stink pots. Hope everyone's okay. A little bit of heavy industrial going on here at the moment, I'm afraid, but can't be helped. We are for nice little ramble. very windy so I won't speak that much which might be a blessing to some of you. That's the red hut where we were the other day. And that is the Mary Stanford lifeboat house where we're heading today. A different route today though. Rather than going straight along the sea path all along there and up there, we're going through the nature reserve. And it's real fine and pretty. Windy, but nice. over towards Fairlight. We'll do Fairlight and I'll show you Fairlight when uh, we come back next year. Should be about six months time guys and girls. God willing. Yeah, this is a lovely little ramble path, this is. Should take us about half an hour. But you get some lovely views and there's a bird hide on the way. So, it's very nice. A bit cold. Oh, not cold, but windy. I've got a fleece in my bag as well anyway, so. By the time we get to the beach, Rob and Simondo should have cooked our food. Because we bunged all our stuff off at the beach. They just want to crash out and have a beach bum day. And I thought I'd walk back through this way and give you guys and girls a little treat of the journey to the beach from here. A little treat for myself as well, funny enough. As I say, I'm a natural introvert by birth so I don't mind a bit of time on my own. A couple of hours here and there. Your Martello Tower on our site. It's a lovely walk. The lakes and everything really nice. Just have to dress up more. Even in the summer it's windy here, so I don't mind that. Hiya. Hiya. Absolutely lovely scenery. It's beautiful, I love it here. I thought I could smell smoke. Farms. The nature reserve's got quite a few of these lakes in them, bird life and whatnot. And you come to the bird hides. Uh, 
boats follow the ebb and tide of the ebb of the tide. Because they get some nasty little gooey things out of the, the mud. So they eat the razor clams and shit like that. So, oh, yuck. It's clever really, you watch a seagull out, it gets a razor clam open. But once it gets it open, you're like, what? Sure for some kinds of seafood for life. Oh, there we go. Into there. Very nice. Hi, Ark. Hi, People are really friendly here as well, it's nice. Oh, saying that, some of the quite a few of the people I know in London are friendly. They mustn't be unfair now. <laughs> Going this way is a lot quicker than the path we went the other day on the bikes. Say half an hour, it might be about 20 minutes, something like that. Yeah, by the time you guys and girls see this one, I'll be back in London. Because things are uploading so slowly here, I'm still only halfway through part two of uh, Rye Castle, which I've had to upload those ones onto YouTube because they're longer than 35 minutes. There's a part one, two, and three. As with this new phone, well, the views, as you can see, are pretty good. Oh, gosh. Yep, yeah, we've seen the sheep. Curly, I've seen quite a few of those. Little egrets, I've seen one or two of them, not many. A spring wimbrel, I've seen quite a lot of those. Widgeon. I haven't seen a widgeon, I must admit. Shell ducks, you see those. Alright, shall we resume our walk? You can walk down there, on the grass, or down there. We wouldn't get such a nice view doing that. Well, if anyone's looking for a little weekend getaway, it's Rye Harbour Holiday Park. And I, I don't normally advertise other things on my page. The only time I've done that is for uh, Abandoned UK to advertise his, his page on my page. I've got a lot of respect for Abandoned. He sort of helped me set this page up kind of thing and encourage me so yeah I'm now promoting Rye Harbour Holiday Park the old English sweet shop in Rye Town mixed bric-a-brac kettle of fish, fish and chips a nice little village shop at the harbour well, there's so many you could name the people in the church in Rye Town are absolutely lovely and so are the people at the church at Rye Harbour you just have to get in touch with them and message to check about opening times and it's a good thing today that I actually bothered to take the time to ring the church room at Northium because what I didn't know the church is unlocked in the morning left open all day so you can just come and go as you want then they lock it back up now you're in London and we can't leave our churches like that so I went in saw the door shut and thought oh it's locked up I didn't even try the door so used to seeing a lot of church door in London, that's it. And I have tried to, <laughs> tried them in London before, I've known by experience. <clears throat> but yeah, I rang the, the church warden, and, sh and they said to me, oh, the, the church is open. I said, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they said the church was open, so I went in and did a nice little tour, which was lovely. It's a beautiful little church though. Well, not, not little, but got some nice stained glass. And you know me, anything with my own ancestry. And I'm kidding a candy store. This is my second visit to 
Norvian church, that one, today. First visit, I got to go down in the crypt because the vicar was there that day. Um, very, very macabre and morbid down in there because when you think of a crypt, like being full of bones and bits of coffin and stuff, that's what you think of a crypt being. Most of them in London have been cleared out and a lot of the time used for other purposes. But this crypt has not been cleared out, put it that way. Including where my ancestor is, he's buried in a silk lead coffin. So, yeah. Anyone's interested in that kind of thing, watch Medieval Dead. Search for Medieval Dead, the man in the lead. And you'll see what happens when they bury people in a sealed lead coffin. This man in the lead is from medieval times, died in the Crusades, was brought back home. Dug up hundreds of years later and still hadn't rotted away, so... here today as well. Which is nice. Carry we on. We've got quite a lot done on this holiday which we're all quite pleased about. It's not cheap to go on holiday abroad or in England now. So when you do, you make the most of it. And you can walk down these little tracks onto the gravel beds and go and see Absolutely lovely. So charming, so tasteful. Just gonna pause you a minute, guys. There we are, needed to pause you a minute. Wipe the water out of my eyes and light my smoke up. That bench acted as a very kind windbreak for the same. Which I thought would like to kind of it. Sorry about the sniffing. I'm not a cocaine fiend, it's just windy here. I like these kind of videos because, uh, I've got a couple of people on my page whose health ain't great, they're housebound. I don't know that one of them particularly, no, two of them particularly, have covered it. It's nice to go along with me on the journey kind of thing. So I've always done, before I started my pages, done these with just my mates or on my own. So yeah, it's nice to bring you guys and girls along. I know this place like the back of my hand, but. Bird's just gone into that bush. It's better than bush. Yeah, it's very, very fine.
<coughs> also, if you're into astronomy, bring a good pair of binoculars or a telescope. You will not be disappointed, as you've seen by my pictures. Or if you've got a camera like her, uh, with a really, really good zoom, like uh, a Nikon, not a camera phone, but I'm talking about a camera, a Nikon, you'll get some good photos with that. Or this kind of phone that I've got, you'll get some, well, as you see. Yeah, you can go this way, which we made the mistake of doing once, because it takes you to a little farm. And we got to the little farm, some bloody great horrendous dog started barking its head off at us. We moved. Quick. Oh, that's better. Wind's calmed down a little bit as you go down into the bowl. This is known as the bowl. In winter, it can be completely flooded. Here we are. And these lakes, they're kind of uh, connecting with each other, some of them. <coughs> yeah, you could, you, well I did ride a bike along here once. Uh, me and Stephen, I think it was the second holiday. I ended up with a puncture and he basically wrecked a decent set of tyres on his bike. So I went the uh, sea road the other day. That's the old pillbox where we were the other day. we go. I've only got my phone blown out of my hand then. Just going to pause you a minute while I wipe my eyes. Just at one of the many memorial benches. These are blackberry bushes, when the blackberries are in season. I don't know whether it's the marsh ground or being so near the sea. They are some of the, some of the nicest blackberries you will ever taste. Marge, she makes an apple and blackberry crumble. And uh, <clears throat> there's women that live around here, they go out and pick them and sell them and whatnot to older people in the town or to whoever in the town. And Marge always buys them. She used to pick them when she was younger. God, it's absolutely gorgeous. We had a nice roast dinner off of March while we was here this week. An ap apple and blackberry crumble. And she made us saying what's called a camp jack, which is like a flapjack, but for when you're camping, which is uh, in a metal tin, like one of the army billy can type things, which is shortbread biscuits with those ground up to blackberries, raspberries made into a type of jam. She smears that all over it. Cast it on top, then another layer and another layer of repeat, keep repeating the layers, and you end up with lovely, lovely afters. Wrap it all in tin foil, bang it in the embers of a fire, and it comes out very nice. Welcome to the parks and Denny Heights. Let's do the Denny. Let's finish 
looking out from the right. Yeah, this is what we're looking out on. So that's where these bird hides are behind me. Look at no, such pretties. Little grebes, that's what we keep hearing and seeing. They, you know, what was, uh, they was putting their beaks down into the thing. That's what we keep seeing, the little grebes. And the winter gadwalls are out already. Common terns, those are the ones with the little black heads. And black headed gulls as well, which are normally a springtime thing, but with the crazy mild weather we've had this year, they're still out. And this is that lake, which we'll get a better view of in a minute. The fences are electrified here, touch them at your own peril. Not these ones, those ones. And they are actually electrified and it does hurt. Hopkins. We're at one of the bird hides, we're not going to stop at all of them. But this is one of the more convenient ones for me to get to, so... Oh, goodness. Hiya. How are you? All right. There we are. Open up one of these. There we are. Quite warm in these. In the day. <laughs> Trust me, it ain't warm at night time. People do sit, come and sit in them at night time though. It's quite quiet here for the bird. Ouch. Thank God my finger weren't completely in that. that back up because that was closed. Oh. I'll have to answer that later because it's in my bag. Just going to pause you a minute, see who that is, because they may ring back, and that really, really, really spoils the videos. There we are. Right, 
see you in a minute all. Yeah, there we are. Random person knew, I thought I knew it was going to be. Run them back, had a little chit chat. It's lovely down here, obviously it's been nice to get back to London and see family and friends and such like. But I could quite happily live down here. It is that late. We was in the bird hide on the lake directly opposite this one. The lake we was looking out to is uh, bigger than this, what we're looking at now. It's quiet for birds at the moment, so. Scenery mostly. Don't find that lovely. There's something magically wrong with you. Well, I was saying that I was with uh, someone, and she said it was boring here. It may be boring to some people, but goodness, must be my idea of heaven. This place, especially if you live in London, it's nice just to unwind and enjoy the quiet and the sea. Hello. Hiya. Hello. Hiya. Dog walker and their dog. Meet some lovely people along these routes. You really do. I've made a few friends down here from uh, in these routes. Nice sunset again. Possibly some more nice astronomy tonight. Since our last night. You know when you're one of those ones where you, you kind of want to go home and you kind of don't. I suppose if you move down here it won't be a, Obviously, won't be a holiday anymore, will it? So, would it lose its novelty? I don't think it would for me, if I'm honest. I hope everyone's enjoying the little ramble. If not, tough shit. I'm only joking. Or am I? back in the dark so this is a nice safe route I've walked in this one I'm, when I came on all down my own one years ago I walked this route in the dark and everything was fine hello King Charles Spinners hiya Lovely dogs can chance me across. Do I like all types of dogs and cats, really, all types of animals, really? Marjorie was, uh, she laughs. Because the first, the very first thing when we get to Rye that I do is come to the sea. And she laughs, she goes, because she's got a good strong Kent accent. She goes, ah, oh, you got the sea in your blood, you have, boy. <laughs> and then, like, with the, the ancestry from Norvium. And the crazy thing is, and I didn't know about this one until a year or two ago, finding out that one of my mum's ancestors was born in Rye. Sodded off from Rye. Went to sea, somehow made a fair bit of money. And then rolled up in North Muscombe in Nottingham 
as a Mr. Edward Hall Esquire, same name as he was before, but with the Esquire and did all right for himself, become a gentleman farmer. Um, three farms. One he lived on, which was Hall's farm, which is where my born ancestors came from. And the others were ones that he rented out to tenant farmers. But yeah. So it's weird that you get that connection. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's strange, isn't it? It's so, two different branches of two different families linked to the same place, the Tuftons at Northium and Mr. Edward Hall at Rye itself. Been able to find out very little about Edward Hall's life in Rye, other than that he was apprenticed here. And then he goes missing for eight years, shows back up as a 28 year old man in North Muscombe, gets married and done all right. Bought a couple of farms, so God knows what he did. Might have been a pirate for all I know. Shingle ridges. I ain't joking about that either. Some people were pirates and there were a good few smugglers and pirates that made their money that came from these parts. Some of them didn't make their money. They got caught up by the customs men, but if Mr. Edward Hall was dodgy, he got away with it because he died a an old man in his bed. Family history is a big interest of mine, as you probably gather. One of the old Winkle paths they used to call it. The Winkle pickers used to bring their carts down. which is about 10 minutes from here to meet my friends because I'm bloody hungry now. She can sometimes fall into a hole, which I've done, and it's not very pretty. That's where I got my nickname Beach Hole Bob, because it happened to me two years running, so I was then named Beach Hole Bob. Well, you can hardly call it footprints in the sand, but footprints in the pea jungle, maybe. Someone's come the same route as I'm going onto the sand flats. And they are very firm and solid, so you haven't got to worry too much. You might end up with wet feet when you just walk through the little channels. But I don't mind that. When I go out, 
onto the sand and we turned my phone off. Yeah, I'll be out to walk along the flats to the Mary's Danford, which is only just there. Looks quite far away, but it's only about five or ten minutes. Such a matty surprise they shall have when I come up from sea rather than from land. Oh, oh my eyes, faltering so bad. You can have the winkle and uh, couple men out and all that business soon. Look at the sea entrance. Is there a sea urchin? Come on. Ugh. See? Some of them survive. Some survive and some don't. If they can stay damp, they'll survive till the next tide comes in. Like this one will do alright because it's buried itself in. And when they don't survive, you know about it, because the stink is bloody awful. I thought they were shells once, interesting shells, and took some home. And within a day or two, the entire, oh, the entire place just filled with the most rancid smell. Oh, look, a razor clam. More razor clams. Isn't this lovely, my dears? Oh, look, there's a, a good specimen of a razor clam there. It's a shell. Seagulls have had that one. Do you know that seagulls are clever? They can pry them open and eat them, and it's disgusting when you see them do that. It really is vile. Ah! There's a man, look, he's, uh, he's picking winkles or cockles or whatever he's getting. Fairlight. <laughs> Mary Stanford Lifeboat House. <laughs> I was going to say something vulgar about the watering of my eyes, but I bet I'll get banned again. My eyes are watering. And it was really vulgar actually, so I won't. This is where you'll get your clams and things and whatever you get from there. My mates have done that, gone and got stuff in buckets, eaten it, and I swear that's what's made Simon ill. And here we have a seabird. Bopping along in the sand, doing its own thing. There's the gap, you can't see it there. They fly away. It's got something, look. 
Ew. Ew. How choppy. How I managed to light that in this wind, I will never know. The red thing there in the centre we're looking at is Rye Harbour. Or the um, entrance to the River Rother, rather, I should say, which takes you into Rye Harbour and into the town of Rye. And we're my little pretty petals are going to walk out to the sea. So this may be near an hour long, this one, but so do. It's such a lovely day. And uh, as I say, I've got several people on my page who are housebound. So this will be a nice little journey for them, if they like it. If not, then I've just enjoyed myself and rambled on. <laughs> Seagulls are getting edgy. Try and avoid them if you can, don't like to disturb them. In the summertime, take your shoes and socks off, roll up your trouser legs and you will enjoy this. Far too cold for that today. Oh look. Oh, it's part of a dead crab. It's part of a dead crab that the seagulls have eaten. How cruel and horrid. going in a minute because they called me and they'll get restless thinking where, where are you sir I keep my dinner warm at least it can be wrapped in foil and kept warm in a fire on the uh, disposable barbecue we use because of the nature reserve things are still a little bit dry the fires we generally have over camber there we did have one on the beach here last time we came because it was quite wet but everything's dry now so best not to try and risk it Right, we'll get out a little bit further, but this is where it starts to get a bit sinking muddy here, so I have to be careful. You might even be beach hole bobbed, you might. It's happened twice. A clam! Well, it was a clam anyway. Yeah, it's getting a bit sinky now. Stick to the drier bits. We've been taught fairly well how to where to go and where not to go, so you can never tell. This is 
far as we go guys because it's going to get very wet and very sinking muddy. Oh, that ain't a fucking rubber dinghy, is it? That's either a kayaker or someone on a rubber dinghy. It's a boy, it's okay. I was gonna say, run Margaret, fetch blunderbuss, we're being invaded. But we're not. Oh gosh, I've sunk into the sand. Oh. Fair light. When the tide's out here, it takes half an hour longer to get out of Fairlight. That'll be something you can all look forward to seeing next time we come. down a bit there to get onto the dry. Jeans, the bottoms of my jeans are soaked. I can feel it wicking up the side of the jeans. Ugh. Should have rolled them up but there we are. Oh, there's someone still in that one. We've got a resident in there. There we are. Them back. May not, probably won't survive once the, once the tide's gone. They generally don't, the fishermen don't get them, the birds soon will, but there we are, I did my best. So how does everyone like being real upfront and close and personal with nature? Damn fine, sure. No, all joking aside, it's lovely here, isn't it, eh? Uh, it'll be another six months or more before my ass touches this place. How sad. <sighs> right guys and girls, I shall end you there. What are we at? 49, yeah. I'll get you to 50 minutes and I'll end you there. Hope you've all enjoyed this little ramble. Lovely bit of nature reserve. Through that and onto the sea. Lovely. And what better to end you on Take care, old.